Back in November, after a school shooting rocked our state and community, an Oxford high school dad called my office. Sobbing, he explained that his wife hadn't eaten and had barely moved, but he felt like he had to try to keep them together, which is why he called me and why he'd already been in touch with parents in Parkland to try to figure out how to move forward and learning that you can't, never fully. I told him, I can't imagine what you're going through right now. As I watched news coverage of the shooting in Texas that left 19 children dead, I heard others say the same thing. I can't imagine what these parents are going through right now. Why do we say that? Because it feels selfish to try to put ourselves in their experience. It feels proper to keep a distance, to give them space and time to grieve. But what if that's the problem? What if an attempt to be polite makes it far too easy to distance ourselves, to not feel their pain, to keep it abstract and reduce the urgency of the issue? What if that space makes it easier to avoid taking action, makes it feel out of our control like we can't? What if instead of saying, I can't imagine how they must feel, we did the opposite? We actively tried to imagine it, to feel what they feel. So today, we're going to try. I want you to think of your daughter, your son, your grandchild. What's their name? What does it feel like when they hold your hand? Or are their hands small enough that they hold just one finger? And which one? Imagine the sound of their laugh. What's the one thing you know that you can always say or do to hear that laugh? A funny noise, a face, a game. How do you feel when you hear that laugh? Like you're the greatest person in the entire world, like nothing else matters, like everything is okay? What color are their sneakers? My daughters are bright silver. As soon as I took them out of the box, she reached for them and she wanted me to put them on. She loves them. Where do they go to school? Do they ride the bus or do you drop them off? Or do you walk together? What's the last story they told you about their best friend? Now imagine them sitting in their classroom, arm raised high, eyes trying to catch their teacher's attention, so eager to ask a question and to learn. Then bang, they hear a shot so loud that the door shakes, their ears ring and they scream, putting their hands to their ears. The room fills with screaming, crying and panic. The door slams open, the gunman points and fires. They watch their best friend fall to the floor, shot dead in the chest. Eyes wide open, blood pools to the ground. The ringing won't stop. They look down and see blood splattered on their shirt. They get up to run, but they trip a loose shoelace. You'd been practicing together. You'd been trying. They'd been getting better each day, but today they didn't have it yet. A loose shoelace, and they tripped on their sneaker. In a panic, they try to kick it off, but they quickly turn around, and he's right there. The gun pointed directly at their head. Tears, screams, crying, crying out, Mommy! The ringing, the ringing is still there. The screams get muffled, the cries fade out. The ringing is the last sound that they ever hear. Your phone rings. It's the school. They need you to come down to give a DNA sample. The bodies are too mutilated to identify. So mutilated that they don't even know how many kids there are. But they found the sneaker. Blood is drying on the top, but the name is still visible in Sharpie on the bottom. What if you knew that you had the power to do something so that you might never have to get that phone call? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you try? This morning, so many people across our state and around our country are at a loss of words again. They feel powerless again. They find themselves feeling numb, that it's not registering like it used to. But you are not powerless. In fact, you're the exact opposite. You have been called to this moment to do something. Don't say that it's impossible. Don't say that we can't do anything. Don't say that now is not the time. Because as I said in November following Oxford, the only thing that I know for sure is that doing nothing will not stop this from happening. It will not stop this one or the next one, or the one after that, or the one after that. My colleagues and I have bills ready to go. We've been waiting for committee hearings for years. What will you do? 
faith without works is dead.